Hello, I'm Stefan Kreber, Project Leader for LexD, and today we're going to be looking at migrating existing systems into LexD. So there are quite a few use cases where, where this may be something you want to do. Um, like one example would be you've got a legacy LXD installation with existing LXD containers and you want to move those into LXD. Uh, another use case would be another existing container or VPS platform uh, that you want to get those containers moved over to LXD. Um, you may also want to turn existing physical machines uh, that you, you have around into either a LXT container or a virtual machine, uh, potentially to let you decommission the, that hardware and like better uh, kind of concentrate your infrastructure on fewer systems and saving power, for example. Uh, it can also, you can also want to do this uh, to um, move from another VM platform or to import existing VM images that you might have, either from a backup or a new clean image that you, you want to create instances from. LexD has two tools to do that. Um, we've got one tool to handle um, general system migration and another one that's specifically designed for LXC. So here I've got the documentation open for the, um, for the primary tool. So that's the one that you can run on an existing system of any kind, whether it's a container, virtual machine, physical machine, doesn't really matter. And it supports two options. One is to create a new container. The other one is to create a new virtual machine. The input for those two options kind of differs. Uh, for a container, it will stream a file system or a set of man points into a container. Whereas for a virtual machine, it expects the path to a disk. Um, the main difference there being that it's quite easy to stream an existing running system um, to a container. But for a virtual machine, you're going to want to stop it and have access to the disk, whether it's an image file or whether it's a uh, physical disk that you might be able to plug in through USB or using a live, um, a live distro to get access to. Here we've got basic instructions for where to find the, the tool. So we, distrib we distribute it as a static binary. That you can just run on any, any system. The only dependency is rsync that you need to, to install. And we support a variety of rsync versions. Uh, it's got a bunch of different ways to interact with LexD itself, support different uh, authentication methods uh, so that it can talk to your remote LexD, whatever the authentication setup is. Uh, we even have an example here of what kind of outputs you might expect from this. And it's pretty powerful. It lets you even tweak the specific config you're going to have, volume size, network, uh, for VMs, turn off, turn secure boot on, on and off. It's really quite flexible. Now, the other tool we have is the LexC to LexD migration tool. This one we can't distribute as a static binary because it needs to actually be linked against uh, libelxc. But we do ship it as part of the LexD snap, which makes it pretty easy for snap users to run and migrate to existing containers. Uh, that tool will effectively let you, well, will look at any LXC container you've got on your system and then lets you import them over to LexD, optionally uh, deleting them. And there's also a dry run mode that you can use. There's uh, some indications here, like for what kind of configuration stuff you might want to look at. But in general, the command, tool, command line tool is reasonably straightforward with few options. It's not as detailed as uh, the, migrate, the migrate tool. With this one, it's, its main focus is really move the instance over, and then you can change its configuration manually to whatever you want. All right, so let's go take a look at those two options. All right, so here in the terminal, uh, I'm in a system that currently is not running an LXD container. It is initialized, though. I do have a storage pool and everything, so I went through LXD in it, but it's not running anything yet. However, if we look on the LXC side, I've got two legacy containers here, U1, U2. Uh, they're currently stopped. The reason why you want them stopped is because the migration tool will fail if they are not stopped. So I can just try that. If you do containers U1, it's going to complain that the container must be stopped. So stop all your containers first. And then you've got two ways to migrate those things. So let's say we do U1 and we want dry run. This will do a bunch of checks going through the configuration to make sure that uh, all the configuration options are supported and that some equivalent can be found on the LXD side. If it all looks good, it just says that it would normally create a container at that stage. Uh, and there's a delete option, which adds an additional destroy step at the end. 
So let's just try to move U1. Just run a command. And we can see that it's, it checks everything, sets up the config, and then uses LexD's migration API to transfer the container or trust. This effectively makes a copy of the container, so you still have the original around if you need to. Uh, just need to keep that in mind because it means you're going to be using quite a bit more disk space temporarily since the container will be kept around. All right, so now we've got U1 here and if we start it. It's going to take an IP address and work just fine. So that's one option. The other option that you might want to look at is if you've got a bunch of containers, you can also just run with dash dash all, at which point it will look at all the containers, since in this case there's U1 and U2 on the system, and it again will do the migration. So if U1 is about done, and then it will go and process U2 as well. Exact same thing, it's running through the checks and then migrating it. So you can do all with dry run to just make sure all the config and everything looks good, that there's nothing weird, and then you can run in normal mode, and at the end of it, they've all been transferred. Now, if we delete them both and use the big hammer, so in this case, we're going to do the exact same thing. So U1, U2 will be moved over, but they will also be destroyed afterwards. So they won't be left on the LXC side. Everything will be running on next day. Okay, so U1 is done, and it, it will have destroyed the U1 connector in LXC, and now it's doing U2. Just give it a few more seconds to complete, and we should be done. Okay. So in this case, there's nothing left on the LXC side, everything is on the LXC side, and we can start them both. And one running. So come on, the second one. There we go. So we've got both instances running with kind of PV4 address and it's all good. Um, as mentioned, you might want to, to go and change some of the settings. In this case, it will have detected what network was used on the LXC side. So it will have connected them to LXC BR0, which then gets them that uh, 1003 IP address. That's so that you can move things over. You've got the exact same Mac, exact same everything. You should get the same IP and effectively no impact on networking. But if your intent is to get rid of um, LXC entirely afterwards, you will want to go and edit that. So you can do edit U1. And in this case, um, what you're going to want to do is let's rename that network device to F0, remove that override here, and change next type to being network. And network, it should be LXDBR0. We keep the MAC address as it is and save. And now if I start U1, it will be connected to the LXD bridge instead of the LXC bridge. You can see it got the different IP address and it's going to get an IPv6 address as well. Uh, so it just kind of depends on what you want to do. If you just want to move a few instances, make sure everything still works, uh, you can keep the network as it's set up. And if if you want to move that over to LXD network, then you edit and you set it to what you want. All right, so that's LXD to LXD. Um, great if you've got a bunch of LXC containers, you need to just move around uh, very quickly. Now, the other tool, as I mentioned, is LXD Migrate. And there are two use cases for it. One is moving a system to a container. The other one is moving a system to a VM. So first, we look at the container case. Um, again, here, I've got U1 and U2. Um, the system is also configured to listen on the network. So if we look at the config, we'll see it's listening on the network right now. This is going to be useful because uh, LXD Migrate is going to need to connect over the network. So you need LXD to be available. Now, here I've got another system called V1, which is a full-on virtual machine that's running on my desktop computer. It's actually even running LexD with a container running on it. Uh, so that's a bit of a special case, but let's try to migrate this thing. So for that, I went uh, on GitHub, went to the release page, and downloaded the uh, bin Linux LexD migrate binary here. And I'm just going to run that. Then it asks for the IP address or URL of the server. In this case, it's going to be 172.17.30.126. Then it prompts for the fingerprint, which you could check against uh, Lexi config show if you wanted, um, or Lexi info if you wanted. And then once that's approved, you've got multiple ways to authenticate. In this case, we're going to use a certificate token, as that's the easiest and safest way to do it. And we'll just create a token for that. Let's call it migrate. Use that token. Let's 
the migrate will automatically revoke the token on exit. So you don't need to go and clean things up. And we want to move this system, which is currently a virtual machine, into a container. So I do container, name of the, the instance, call that v1, provide the path to the root file system. So it's going to be slash that we want to move across. There's no additional mount in this case. I don't have a separate home directory or mount point or anything. Otherwise, I would specify that there. Okay, and now I can override some some extra things. I could set uh, storage pool, volume size, network, etc. What I'm going to need to do is because it runs LexD inside of it, uh, let's just try and be nice and enable nesting. So I'm going to do security nesting true. And now if we zoom in on the recap, it shows instance to be created v1, project default, it's a container, source of transfer is slash, and we want security nesting enabled. I could go and change more settings, but that should be it for this demo. So I'm just going to hit the default answer, and now it will start streaming the entire entire disk across. I don't actually remember the setup for LexD on that particular system. If it's, um, if it's set up with ZFS, then it's not going to work inside a container. But if the setup for LexD was using a directory backend, then there's a good chance that converting that VM to a container will have its nested container still working. So it'll be interesting to see. I truly don't remember, so we'll see. Um, from what I recall, it takes a bit of a gig uh, for that entire system because it's, it is a full VM. It's got a kernel and everything installed. Uh, you might have noticed earlier that the, the simpler containers you know, with Lexi to Lexi were just 100, 200 megs there about. This is a much larger system and more representative of what to expect if you're moving an existing physical server over to Lexi. Okay. Uh, once that's completed and you've started it, it's usually best to go and clean up some of the config because things like uh, physical disks won't really matter anymore once it's a container. And similarly, you don't need a kernel or bootloader or any of that kind of stuff, so you can remove a bunch of that to save space after the migration. Okay, so let's look at the migration target. We've got v1 here, and I start that. Okay, and if we look at the config for v1, we should see that you know, it's got the security nesting enabled and everything else is kind of standard. So let's go inside it. It does show it's v1 and it's currently uh, starting up. Chances are it's currently blocked on um, either setting up network or storage as that's pretty standard. So you usually want to go in FS tab and either wipe it or just comment all the entries and then go and look at your network config for what it looks like. In this case, it looks like it's going to be correct. So no need to change that and then reboot it. So the reboot, let's see if it's any happier. Yeah, it looks like it's better. So it's getting more things started. Uh, I still don't know whether LexD will actually work. It's currently trying to start. Let's see if uh, what's the disk setup there. Okay, so I think it might actually be using a standard uh, directory pool. So this might actually work. And yeah, we see LexD is running and it's still waiting for things to start. And our container A1 is actually starting up right now. Not sure. Oh, yeah, I know why. Uh, this is a debug version of LexD that I'm <laughs> testing on this system, actually. Uh, but yeah, right now we can see LexD is running. A1 is here. It's struggling to start. That's not very surprising. Again, that particular random VM I picked uh, is the one I'm using for some LexD development. So. Not super surprising, but yeah, there you go. Um, this was a virtual machine running on my desktop, which is now a container running on a server in my basement. And you can do the same thing to either a container running on a VPS instance somewhere or a virtual machine you've got somewhere or a physical system. And LexD Migrate will make that pretty easy for you. The other use case for LexD Migrate is to consume pre-installed disk images. There's no easy way for LexD to do that. LexD can easily start a virtual machine uh, from, well, with a CD-ROM drive, for example, and you go through the install process. But if you're downloading a distro or some image that's like pre-installed, the easiest way to deal with that is actually LexD migrate. So what I've got here, I actually have here an Ubuntu Core 22 image, and we're gonna import that using the same tool uh, in, as, a, as a new virtual machine. So in this case, I'm going to be importing to the local server. So 127.0.0.1. Still need to do certificate authentication. So we're going to do 
just add again name of that my group whoops well, i made a typo but it doesn't actually matter so do that and this time i'm gonna say that i want a virtual machine we'll call that core 22 and then it asks to provide the path to the image file which in this case is root and the image it does ask whether the vm supports secure boot and assumes that by default no because most operating systems uh, especially for those kind of custom images don't in this case it does support secure boot i'm just gonna say yes and here it shows again the resulting config so it shows it's gonna be core 22 in default project it's a virtual machine it's created from this file and it's got secure boot enabled now if you wanted like if you had a usb drive with a, a full system installed you want to turn into a vm on next day you would pass something like dev sdb as the source and that would work just fine just don't pass your own disk that's not going to work well at all you really want the system to be offline as it's being streamed into a vm all right so just going to use the default and it's going to again do the transfer this time pretty quickly because we're local so it's pretty much pretty much writing as fast as my storage pool can write and once that's done we can start that vm and just see that it's booting properly not going to go through the full ubuntu core setup but we're going to just see that it works uh I'm trying to remember what's the size about four gigs ish i guess yeah there we go okay so let's just start that core 22 vm with a console attached to it can see we're going through the uh, the firmware right now so it's booting going to grub and then the kernel should be booting shortly this is the text console so it, it won't show me all the shiny um, output you would normally get uh, as this thing is booting but that's because i'm dealing with a remote server and it's a bit tricky to get the vg output if it was running on my desktop i'll just do the vg output instead okay uh, so this is starting up i think it's gonna hit partitioning shortly but yeah effectively this is ubuntu core 22 first boot um, working instead of a lex dvm in this case might give it just a few more seconds to see it hit the partitioning but then we'll let it do its thing come on i did it early oh there we go <laughs> Now it's partitioning. Okay, so it does that, and then once the partitioning is done, it reboots and then does the final install. Uh, so that should happen pretty shortly. Actually, seeing, yeah, there we go. It's stopping SnapD now, and next step is going to be reboot, which will disconnect us from the VM as it's as it's restarting. There we go. So that was a bit too cool. Uh, and if we just look, I need to reset for colors. There we go. U one, U two. So if we stop everything. We're left with Core 22, which is a virtual machine that we imported from a local image file. We've got V1, which is what well, used to be a virtual machine running on another machine that's now running as a container on there, and it's attached to the default network uh, here. Same thing as Core 22. Then we've got U1 and U2 that used to be LXC containers running on the system. U2 is still attached to the original Lexi bridge, whereas U1 is attached to the Lexi network instead. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you can easily kind of consolidate everything on one system, uh, whether they're existing virtual machines, physical machines, containers, doesn't really matter. You can import everything in next day. And after a bit of configuration and tweaking, it should work just fine. So just moving back to documentation. Again, we've got two pages in our docs for now. So it's under operation migration, and then you've got a grid from next day, which covers the Lexi to Lexi tool and We've got a separate one for importing existing machines, which covers the LexD migrate tool. And that's it. I hope this was uh, useful to, to you, uh, that you might have some existing VMs, containers, random systems kicking around that you, you figure you could probably move to LexD to save a bit of power or save some cloud fees. Um, this is all pretty straightforward and should work pretty well. So if you've got any questions, leave them down below, or you can go on our community forum, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.